right. So this is gonna it's a special interview with um, Ed McCollin from Operation Creekside, and it's really really nice to get to do this get together. So if we go back a little bit. How man? When when did we first meet? Uh, 2017. Well, it has something to do with some that's Let me bet. You know, Russell Carpenter was a good friend of mine, and I think that's how you and I connected through Russell. How, how did you meet Russell? I just mm -hmm. popped in there one day. Like, was it was this like 17, 15? When, when did you start rolling around here? Uh, I don't know. Uh, probably six, 15 or 16. I don't know. 15, but, uh, 16. Popped in there one day, and uh, Russell came out like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> yeah. And he saw the Bible on my front seat, and he said, "We're gonna be good." Yeah. So I thought that was cool, and we were really good friends. Uh, you know, did what, a lot of stuff together. What brought you to the area, uh, Sonora, California? Um, I had a vacation home in Groveland for quite some time, and ended up liking it up here a lot. You know, moved up here. Nice. Now I live in Tuolumne. Kind of love this little town. Oh yeah. Yeah. Now, when you um, let's go back to like when you started with your ministry. How did what year and how did that all come about? Uh, somewhere around 2009, I got um, basically um, saved again um, and became a believer. And uh, what happened basically as a recovering alcoholic. I had to find something to do that I could devote the same amount of energy to. And I decided, why not to our military? Obviously, in 2009, 2010, they're 10 years into the, the war on terror. It turns out to be a great um, op for me to serve the military as a civilian. You know, I'm a civilian. I serve veterans and families that have lost loved ones to military suicide and active duty. You know, it's just a, it's a pretty good little operation. You know, some of that's developed over time from knowing you. Like when you first started, it was mainly your care packaging, and then how did you get into like relationship building and chaplain work? You know, care packs is easy to do. Uh, we've done so many. I don't. I've lost count. Probably twenty thousand care packs. You know, since two thousand ten. But it gives you when you're out there, it gives you more information. Yeah. You know, and we had a U.S. Army chaplain deployed to Iraq in two thousand eleven that we supported. Uh, quite a bit and he came home he was at Fort Hood uh, when that tragedy happened down there and then he was at Fort Riley and in uh, January 2014 he took his own life so that was my introduction to post-traumatic stress so from that I started serving at Johnny and Friends uh, Warrior Getaways and meeting a lot of veterans and families and you know other people like myself that uh, really cared and so the ministry pretty much it changed and in the last five or six years, uh, building benches, memorial benches for families that have lost military loved one to suicide has been uh, quite really in our focus. Is something that we're probably going to do a lot more of. Yeah. See, and that I mean, you, I've seen you shift a little bit into like from care packages to programs to like this is a big impact and need when you're building these benches and getting to know people across the country. I mean, this has really brought you across the country in many yes. ways. Every year I go across the U.S., almost all of it at least once. It's gonna, that's gonna grow because there's, uh, there's too many families for us to serve. There's, there just is too many. But um, the ones in, in our database with 22 too many uh, really would like to attempt to at least visit all those families. I'm a chaplain. I can go visit anybody. Um, they love telling their stories. They love to have someone ask about their loved one and mention their names. So it's very important to me, and it's honoring. And um, you know, we include people. Like if we're going to somewhere in Texas, we'll notify a VFW there and say, "Hey, you want to go with us to deliver this bench?" And they usually say yes, and they get impacted too when they go with us. I can imagine. I mean, I, I, I think about it. I know my uh, my wall, my own personal wall, seven individuals that I've known in my, my career personally that have taken their own life. And just the thought of just trying to speak with their families or even about them is very difficult. And so, um, you know, when I think about what you're doing as a veteran, it's like one of those missions that I feel like I can't 
necessarily be a part of. It's like, I don't think I've got it in me. I mean, you don't want people breaking down while they're, you're trying to deliver a bench. Like, that's probably, um, how do I say for that family? That'd be awkward, I guess, is one word. Is you know, it's, it's actually pretty difficult for me, but it's uh, important uh, enough to, to do it. And, um, you know, it's, I actually had a Marine, he's a really good friend, ask me if I was getting uh, cold hearted because I could deliver without breaking down. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, 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 uh, it's difficult. And I try to keep it together, at least during the delivery. You know, sometimes I'll be driving down the road afterwards and just crying. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's definitely not, uh, it's not easy to do. But those families, they don't get much attention. So it's it's very worthwhile to uh, visit. And then if it works out, to uh, let them help us design a bench. And they're beautiful, they're absolutely beautiful. Everyone is unique uh, for their loved one, and they're all beautiful. So we've done 16 out here on the West Coast, and uh, Joe and Carol, my friends back East, have done uh, five and they're working on five more so I think this year we're going to ramp that up you know we've got a hurting group of people and they need the love they need the support that we're that we're offering well thank you I mean that's it's definitely a, a hardcore mission and I'm glad that you picked it up and hopefully there's more people out there we just you know you never cross paths you're on a mission and hopefully there's other people doing the same thing just reaching out to these individuals so we'll talk, let's talk more about um, the beginning history of the benches. <clears throat> so you got one builder here. Like, let's get into the details. You got one builder here, and what's your tip? What's the average cost, and what are we looking at on on, this, on the project? Let's just say one project alone. What, how's it all? Yeah, from start we have to a builder here in Jamestown, and he's a, a good friend's son. He's very talented. And I was putting them dollar amount of about $2,000 uh, for bench, but obviously in California, the metal prices have went up with everything else. So now we're thinking more like 2,500 just for the bench. And that's because it's a lot of pretty detailed uh, and then you have to powder coat it. And the delivery isn't even part of that because mm -hmm. that has to be separate because we never know where we're going. I've got two, um, Benches going to Houston, Texas this year, and two more going to Michigan from from here. So that has to coordinate with other stuff that I do to make it you know worthwhile of driving that far. So we're looking at about two thousand twenty five hundred a bench, and then depending, let's let's say you're going halfway across the country. What does uh, fuel cost look like in that? Fuel cost is hard to track, um, but what's an estimate? The last trip was to Ottawa, Kansas. I covered about 4,000 miles, and it cost about $1,500 for fuel. That all together, 1500 yes. um, And that's I, not including, sometimes you, you hit so hotels, your food. How does, that, how does that work out for you? You know, I try to, that's why I travel alone, because basically one room, you know, get that free meal in the morning, and um, I carry my own food often. I drive long miles. Um, you know, if you drive long miles, you're saving hotel stays mm -hmm. so if you can go like that like the Ottawa Kansas trip was beautiful um, the family needed what we offered which was um, something they'll all they'll cherish for their son and uh, that trip was 900 mile days to get it done before winter hit last year uh, but it was uh, worthwhile and so we'll go the extra mile and no pun intended there and uh it's uh, like I say the mission when you show up with something like this this is obviously not one of our um, uh, regular benches um, this is honoring all military but when you show up with something and their loved ones uh, information is on the left side the American flags in the middle and the 22 too many is on the right uh, the families are just overwhelmed and that's something they get to keep and we deliver them in person we don't ship we don't build anything and ship it in a truck we like I'll deliver on all of my benches made here and then Joe will deliver the benches that he makes uh, back east. So we got a builder on the, on the east coast too, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, when you think about all the benches that you've done, um, are a majority of them on private property with the families or is there some in public, public places or how does that? 
panned out for you, worked out? Most of them are at the family's home. The first one um, is in Rock Springs, Wyoming, in the front yard. Dave and April Thompson, we lost their son Joshua. And I go visit often if I'm going through and to talk with the family and see the bench. And there is one in uh, at a veterans memorial in Custer, South Dakota. And I kind of like that one being in public. Uh, people get to see it and um, they get to see what kind of work, you know, is goes into a bench. Mm -hmm. And that one's for Cody Ingen, um, a U.S. Marine. So most of them, though, are at the family home. How does, um, you were mentioning to me earlier about the future of like, this is like, is this like technically the first promo bench that's not really done for anybody? This was, this was particularly donated by Tim and Karen Robinson of Ro Tuolumne. Robertson, yeah. Robertson of Tuolumne. That's going to obviously got Carter Cemetery on there. We're going to be delivering it later today and we'll have a, the VFW post will be a part of the Carter Cemetery's Memorial Day and we'll be making plans to dedicate this. Um, on behalf of the veterans. But what do you see in the future? You were talking about the future of possibly using promo benches to help fund the program? Yes, um, we have a few, and we don't want to do a lot of promos just because of the cost. Yeah. Um, we've got one that's going to my church at Calvary Chapel in Soulsbyville. Um, they're, they're behind their mission. Um, we've got one down in, we got two down in Brentwood that are at businesses that support our mission. But uh, moving forward, we're working on one right now. Uh, I mentioned earlier about the chaplain, mm -hmm. uh, the U.S. Army chaplain, Joshua Ramey. We're building one right now in his honor and his chaplain assistant. Yeah. So we had both chaplain and assistant within one year's time take their own lives. We're building a bench with both families' permission that we will take with us wherever we go. Oh, wow. So when we're delivering benches, uh, the, obviously, the new big trailer is right outside the door as we're talking. Uh, Joshua and Michael's bench will be inside the trailer, and whatever we're delivering will, will also be there. So I think when I'm traveling, uh, oftentimes with that trailer, you get conversation like at Love's Truck Stops with people, and they'll be able to come inside the trailer and see what we're doing. And sometimes that gets you some more support because it's obvious this is costly. It's, it, it, you know, this is a mission that needs to happen, needs to be done. The families need uh, what we're doing, but it's costly. So, uh, but there's also a part of that we've talked about a lot is that we're you're you're being um, not I wouldn't say shy is the right word, but being respectful in a way of not making this a big promotion. You know, lights, camera. You know, when you're doing these things. But the the bad part about it, that particularly, is getting the word out and the support. So, how, I mean, in your own words, can you describe this 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 type of thing? You know, um, I have a board of directors that is one hundred percent down with the mission, even as we transition into more benches. But we've always felt that we do not want to promote ourselves. We do not want to grind people for money. We want to share the mission. And show people that we're doing the work and if they decide that they want to come alongside that's up to them uh, it probably is harder to work that way but again it's 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 relying on god instead of our own means to do what he enables us to do and it's been amazing what we've been able to do i think this year is going to uh, grow and uh, benches delivered and it's just going to be for us being obedient you know, the, the fact that I can drive the miles, God had that orchestrated long before he put this on my heart. Oh, yeah. I, 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 over the years of working with you um, and watching your mission, I mean, just the, you know, we went from old trailer to new trailer now. We went from, how many, how many trucks have you gone through? Like, this is crazy. Yeah, the I mean, trucks, if you look at it logically, it's, it's depressing what the cost has been for trucks that shouldn't break down. Yeah. But every, it's been, it's been, there've been opportunities. And even when you, I was broke down last year in Myrtle Beach for five days. And I'm not spending money like a tourist. So I'm yeah. pretty much in a hotel, you know, um, one or two meals a day, saving money, waiting for my truck to be repaired. 
But you know, I interacted with shops across the country because the truck kept breaking down. <laughs> and when I finally got somewhere in Kentucky, they fixed the truck just in time for me to get to Illinois. You know why? Yeah. To yeah. pick up that trade car for you. Uh, yeah. So it's like, it's if you look at it from that perspective, it's okay. Yeah. You know, because God works. And then right after I picked up that car, I drove all the way up to Wassa, Wisconsin, to meet a U.S. Navy corpsman who I had met at an event, and we spent a day on the Wisconsin River, and we it was just amazing. You know, so the breakdown is just an unfortunate thing, but you know things happen that you can't let that detour your mission, and we haven't. I've al I've always wondered, like all these hours that you spent on the road, technically by yourself. How, what, what do you do to keep focus? Like, are you listening to Christian music? Are you listening to podcasts? Or what, what is your routine to keep your keep you awake and keep you going? What, what does that look like? You know, it's it's funny. We, I just had this conversation with my pastor. Um, sometimes it looks like I'm the Lone Ranger, but that's not on purpose. That's just what has to be done to get the you know, mission work accomplished. And when I'm driving, I'm, I'm a Caleb radio guy and I'm listening mm -hmm. to Christian music and uh, it keeps me focused um, and I'm always praying. I'm praying for the family, you know, ahead of time. I'm praying for the family after I leave. And then usually I have something lined up, you know, after the delivery in Ottawa, Kansas, um, two hours later, I'm sitting down with a veteran and his wife that are from here and they flat out told me that my mission saved their marriage from encounter eight years ago. Wow. And it's like, so that's how this mission works. You don't just go deliver a bench and you celebrate and you think you're really cool. You go on to the next mission immediately, whatever God lines up, you know, you have to these days, you know, just to save money, you have to have other plans. You have to go and keep focused on the mission instead of this big relief, nothing to do, thousand mile drive home. There's always something to do. There's a there's somebody at a gas station that wants to say hello. Yeah. You know, so it's 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 actually, and I'm encouraged on the road, even though I'm I travel alone. Now, how does um, when you, did, you were a dock builder before, and did I mean do you have like a retirement? I mean, you're you seem like a lot of this is out of your own pocket. Um, I'm probably trying to get more personal. So, like, what is what does that look like for you? I mean, your 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 foundation from retirement, for, or still working? Do you do part time work? How does how does that look for you? You know, it's interesting. Um, I was a, a general contractor for 25 years, made a lot of money, um, and that was also part of my drinking days. So, um, you, you get to a point where um, you look back and think, "Wow, you know, I." probably should have this big savings account. <laughs> but I think it's, it's, uh, it just shows me that God provides, you know, I live, um, you know, I don't live, I don't buy things for myself. My son made that comment once. You don't buy anything for yourself, dad. I live, um, you know, within my means and the nonprofit, uh, it, it takes care of the expenses of what we do. And the hardest thing is fuel. Obviously that is, that is really costly. But um, it works for me because um, I just maintain a low profile. You know, I don't vacation. It's funny. Mission might as well be a vacation to me because if I'm on the road doing, you know, doing what we do, that would be my vacation. You know, I go, I pay to work at Johnny and Friends. I've done 17 warrior getaways with Johnny and Friends and you have to pay to go do that. And so basically I pay to go on vacation, but it's so rewarding. You know, to meet the vets and I've become friends with uh, veterans nationwide by doing that kind of thing. So for me, I, I'm the one that gets blessed. My intention is to bless others. My intention is to help vets with PTSD. My intention is to go love those families of the, of the 22, but I'm the one that gets blessed. You know, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. I can, I can relate in a lot of ways. Like as a veteran with PTSD, it, it's very hard for me to like block out a few days to be like, oh, I'm gonna go to a resort. It's always like I have a better time if I'm gonna go to a state meeting with veterans, you know, VFW meetings or hospitalized veterans meetings, because it's like I feel like I'm with 
people and I feel like, yeah, I'm vacationing, but I'm accomplishing something um, relationship wise and doing good things. And, but at, at the same time, like I'm also married and that doesn't necessarily jive, you know, it's like we want to all focus on family stuff. So that's definitely a, um, that's a hard balance for me in that regard. But in the end, um, I just, I think there's a connection. I just can't not do anything. You know what I'm saying? I think you can relate because you're always, you're always on to the next mission day to day. I mean, I call you every, every time I'm calling you, it's like, what are you doing? You're like working on a mission. You're preparing something. You're doing, you're delivering wood. I mean, working with men's groups, it's, um, I just want to say, say thank you. And I also relate to what you're doing. And I really appreciate what you're doing. And, um, I said, I want to, I got to say it now on video because I say <laughs> no, it to everybody no, no, that no, I meet. Do it. Yes. Ed, Ed does more for veterans than anybody I know as a single individual. And, um, and that is true to the core for not being a veteran, being a civilian, putting your heart out on the line and, and God giving you that mission. Um, you've, as far as I'm concerned, you've earned your cred as a chaplain, a military chaplain. Um, you, you deal with this on a daily basis. You take calls in the middle of the night, hours on end talking to veterans. I know we've talked over the years. I, I know you're doing that. So it's just, that's awesome. And I really appreciate it. Again, you, you're the one individual I know that does more for veterans than anybody I know. So thank you. You know, it's easy for me to be honest with you. It's easy. God has put me in a position to be that available. Mm -hmm. You know, I think about it, um, being single for like 15 years now, you know, I had a beautiful wife and I love to be married. You know, my alcoholism pretty much destroyed that marriage. And it's painful sometimes when you think, man, you know, all my church buddies up here are married, they've been married a long time. And that's cool. You know, I, I love seeing how these guys treat their wives so well. You know, you too. Uh, but for me, God has given, it has given me the ability to be that available. You know, you have somebody that calls me and says, hey, Ed, I got a veteran out of firewood. The mm -hmm. next day they have firewood. So that's all God making me available and saying, look, I let you run amok for so long. Now you're working for me for the rest of your days. And how do I top that? How do I complain about that? It would be selfish if I complained about what he's done for me to be able to be so available. I, I, I can relate in a, in a probably more personable for the video, but I'm going to say it anyways. When I came back from Iraq, I was um, 22. I uh, got off a 14 month deployment, <clears throat> beautiful wife. Spent actually spent my first year anniversary in Iraq. Came home. I was just flat drunk for three months, just hitting the bottle every day, you know, celebrating we're back. And it, um, that's not, it got to a point where I wanted to commit suicide and I felt or heard a voice inside me and said like, Hey, if you don't want this life, give it back to me. And uh, that's the, where I can relate with you. It's like you get to the bottom and you, and you don't know what else to do. And God says, well, fine then work for me. And that, that is a big undertaking and you never know where it's going to lead. It's that's absolutely true. You know, everybody, like my bottom might have not been the gutter, but it was low enough. And the um, fact that I don't want to ever go back there, and it doesn't really matter. You know, a lot of times people get caught up in how awesome their crazy junk story is. I don't often tell my crazy junk story. Only if I'm talking with a guy that's struggling, and it could be a veteran, I might say something about my story. But most of the time I'm listening with that heart has been there and it's so painful. When a veteran tells me a story that it just lines right up with something that's already happened in my life, the best thing to do is just listen. If he gets through that story without breaking down, without getting all desperate, then you know that he's, he's uh, growing, he's moving forward. And that the best way again, is to listen to that story. Don't steal that story. Don't say, I've been there, done that. You know, just listen to that story. It's really important. So like say, I'm blessed with the fact that God has given me a mission. It's not just one thing. We, I mail care packs on the road. You know, we're still living in a free country. 
so I can mail care packs from any post office in the U.S. And I can visit veterans. I can go to events. I can work with the Johnny and Friends getaways. I can deliver benches. I can meet families. I can do all of that on the road on any given trip. So that's how it's not boring for me. It's always, like you say, one mission to the next. Well, I think we're pretty much got it wrapped up. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you for taking the time to um, learn about the mission of Operation Creekside. Thank you for taking the time to to love on our 22 families. And if you feel so inclined, please reach out to Operation Creekside Ed or Vets Helping Vets, myself, Aaron Rasmussen, and uh, we'll get you plugged in in a way that you can we can continue this awesome mission that's happening that's um truly a blessing yeah any final words god bless america and all who keep her free all right all right thank you very much see you on the other end